Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Doom series and in this video we are going to start loading Doom maps. Alright, so before we can do that we need to go ahead and uh, do some code cleanup. So I'm gonna open up vod.h and vod.c and in this function you can see we are allocating a bunch of stuff but we are not actually freeing it in the end. So in order to do that I'm gonna go here and run a for loop that will go over each of the lump in the vods and uh, for each of those lump we just need to free the lump data and because that's the only thing that's been allocated on the heap. Uh, so we are gonna just go ahead and get the data and we are going to free this because we malloced it earlier so we can free it now safely. And in here we are also going to uh, free the number of lumps in the word actually not the number of lumps the actual lumps and let's also set the number of lumps to be zero as a good measure and in main.c you can see we were doing all of this code for testing but that's not really necessary anymore we can just go ahead and uh, remove that completely and you will now realize that the offset fields inside of our word structures and lump structures are also not necessary because we are storing the data we don't need to keep the offset in the file so in here we are going to just go ahead and uh, create a unit 32 here called lump offset and in here all of those we are going to use the directory offset but here we'll use our lump offset when actually getting the lumps data and uh, that's pretty cool and we want to actually store the directory offset in the word but instead we'll just read the directory once since we are never going to actually touch it again and uh, we can try to run this and make sure that we get no segmentation false but this should work and uh, yeah now we can move on to the fun parts Okay, so now I'm gonna create a new file here called map.h and in here of course we'll add our mandatory include guards and we'll define a structure here for storing our map data. Currently we'll actually leave this structure empty because we don't we will put stuff in here later. So uh, now we can go under our word.h and we'll create a new function that will return an int for an error code and that will uh, basically uh, try to read a map into a map pointer from the bot file and we can have the bot as a const pointer now. And one more thing is that um, uh, when we are reading the map we obviously need to know the map name so we will add another argument here that will be the name of the map now we will implement this here we will get to that implementation in a second inside of the main function you can see we are loading our word file here i'm going to go ahead and copy this code and we're going to change it to read from the map file and uh, we are going to read uh, e1 m1 as the map and uh, of course we need to pass a pointer to our word and we also need to pass a pointer to our map we'll just create a map underscore t here called map and uh, we will just uh, if that fails we will deliver an appropriate error message instead of uh, the other one and uh, yeah that uh, that should try to read that map here and we are also going to return with an error code different error code if it fails now for the implementation we can just return zero right now but we now need to actually do something here okay so for the implementation of this we'll first of all need to create another function which will be uh, we'll return an index to a lump given a particular lump name and a word so it will be called wall file a word find lump and in here we are gonna just go ahead and uh, uh, we are going to do a pretty simple linear search we are just going to go over like all of the elements until we find the desired one so we're gonna go over our each of our lumps and we're gonna compare the name of this lumps uh, so the current lump that we are iterating over we are gonna compare it name with the lump name if that's equal to zero then we are going to return the current index uh, if all fails that means we didn't find the lump and we are going to return negative one and uh, then here what we can do is that we can take a uh, we can create a variable called map index and we can just find our you know the map names lump so maps also have their own lump and we are going to get find that index and uh, uh, if it's less than zero then we're going to just return one here and uh, in the end we are gonna go ahead and uh, print that even m1 was found at uh, this value so uh, we are gonna just print it for testing and if i run this what you should see is that it does say that even m1 was found at 6 which is a correct index Alright, so in order to read the map, we are going to define some indices here and the actual map data is not stored in a map lump, instead it's stored in a number of lumps after it. So we are going to go ahead and hard code the actual indices of those lumps uh, that are supposed to be present after the main map lump. And then we are going to go ahead and just define them first things followed by side depth, line depth, then vertices and then the actual segments. And after that we have also got uh, our subsectors and followed that we have got our nodes and then after that we have got our sectors. There are also a couple of more but we are going to just have it uh, like this for now. And uh, you know this uh, we are not going to be using all of these and we will talk about them when we actually use them. First of all we will create a function to allow us to read the vertices. Now inside of the vertices lump you should know that uh, each vertex is stored as two 16 bit signed integers which are basically one is for uh, you know uh, reading the actual uh, x value and one for the y value and in here we are going to just call the read vertices function with our map and the lump is going to be the lump with the appropriate offset so we are going to take our map index and then add to that our vertices index 
and uh, now go ahead and uh, let's go ahead for implementation of this of course we need to have something in our map.h here currently we've got nothing in here so we are going to create an array of uh, vector tools here which we are going to call our vertices and we are also going to have a size of the array and we need to include ftdf here uh, like that and with that we've got our vertices here done but we actually need to of course uh, load these data so for that we're gonna for the vertices as i said there are two unsigned bit assigned uh, 16 bit integers so total is gonna be 32 bits and uh, each uh, vertex is 32 bits and actually we need to say four bytes instead of 32 bits and uh, uh, we are supposed to go ahead and uh, allocate the correct amount of uh, memory for our vertices here so you know two for the x and two for the y so we're gonna go ahead and call map vertices we're going to call malloc uh, with the, the allocation is going to be the size of each vector multiplied by the number of vertices that we are creating all right so now we are supposed to begin actually reading this vertices and stuff so for that we are going to start at zero and we're going to have two indices one for the you know actual index in the lump and one for the uh, index of the vertex and we're gonna uh, increment uh, the j but for i we're gonna add four to that and then for the each of those lumps we're gonna set its value to be uh, you know map uh, we're gonna first of all have to actually create a macro for reading a 16-bit integer like that so we're gonna read i16 here and uh, in here we have got uh, we just need to remove the reading of two other bytes here and let's see if we can fit it onto one line uh it uh, does not appear to fit on one line so let's just move it to the other one and we are gonna uh, load this here uh, like that you know two uh, two uh, vertices and we are gonna use read i16 to actually read it the offset is gonna be i for the first one and uh, Actually, that gives an error. We need missed a parenthesis here. And uh, now let's go ahead and lo uh, load the y value of the vertices very similarly, except that the offset is going to be i plus 2. So now, in order to test this data out, we can go ahead and start to run this. And I can just go ahead and use printf to print all of these values. So we are going to go ahead and begin by printing two floats here. And, follow, and of course, these are going to be the x and y of the correct vertex. And if you were to run that, uh, you should see that. Uh, uh, well, it kind of works and I want to change this to G so that we don't get any other, you know, point values and you can see that it gives a lot of results But we actually forgot to add a new line here So if I add a new line you'd see that it gives a lot of results which are actually inaccurate if you were to test this out in a map editor Alright, so the reason it didn't work was because it was reading it as unsigned because that's what our data is So we can fix this by just casting our reads to uh, signed integers And if I run it now and you can see it works and let me go ahead and run it in the terminal And now you can see that uh, well we get all of these data and negative values are here as well And these are actually correct now And of course just writing them to the console isn't really fun So we want to actually see them onto the screen So for that we can just draw a point for every vertex So let's begin with that So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this here and we are going to run a for loop and uh, we should probably use a size here and uh, we are going to run it until the map number of vertices and we are going to uh, basically just draw it vertices vertex so for that we are going to get our vertices uh, you know the actual in current vertex and we are going to draw it with a size of five and a color of yellow now if i run this nothing appears on the screen why is that well, uh, for uh, to illustrate why that happens, we are going to go under map and we are going to add something to this uh, map here. So we are going to store the minimum and maximum value of our vertices. So we can do that by storing four floats here, min x, min y, min x, x, and max y. But uh, you could change this to a vector two and that would be better, I guess. So we are going to just change it to two vector twos, one is min and one is max. So to test this, I'm gonna go under what.c and in here we are gonna go ahead and first of all initialize this to uh, some default value. So the minimum is going to be a vector two consisting of positive infinity so that whatever value we get is actually gonna be less than and it doesn't work because it included the C++ header. Uh, I don't know why it seems keeps doing that. But anyways, for the max, we are gonna just use negative infinity. And uh, now for each iteration of the loop, we'll make sure that our uh, min value is not like, uh, if, uh, if the current value of the vertex is less than this min value, then uh, uh, actually less here. So if it's less than the min value, then we're gonna change the minimum value to be uh, this vertex value. So we're gonna go ahead and set the x value to this vertex value. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it four times and we're gonna change it uh, to use y here. And then we're gonna change this to use the actual max uh, value instead of min value. We're gonna have to change this to greater than and this to greater than as well and change this to y. And in here we're gonna change this to max.x and max and y here. 
so yeah that um, that is going to record those values and if i were to just go ahead and print the actual maximum and minimum values like that so we can just go ahead and print the minimum and the maximum values what you would see is that uh, well you would see that it doesn't actually work that well so we get uh, map.min.x and map.min.y here and uh, max.x and max.y and if i run this you would see that uh, uh, our minimum and maximum values fall clearly out of the range of our screen and that is why it is not rendering so in order to fix this problem we'll need to remap our vertices such that they appear on the screen so for this i'm gonna create a util.h header file and we'll just add some implementation of a main and max macros here and for this i'm using the non standard c gcc uh, expression statement format here if you don't have gcc then you can use the standard c, uh, c format as well but that has some uh, quick quirks of its own and it's a bit uh, hard to get right but uh, well, you can also implement min and max as a uh, function. But anyways, we are going to go here and we are going to uh, go ahead and allocate an array called remap, uh, remapped vertices of the same size as the maps vertices. And then for each of these, we are going to set this to a value uh, and we are going to compute the correct value to make it onto our screen. So for that, we'll begin by clamping our uh, maps value to our, you know, uh, clamping the current vertex to the map coordinate. So we are going to use min and max here to clamp it uh, kind of like you what you would expect and uh, after clamping that we are going to uh, we are going to subtract from uh, you know we are going to take this value and we are going to subtract the uh, maps minimum value from this now with the value we get here we are going to now go up here and define two vector tools one is going to be out min which is going to represent like how uh, you know what we actually want the minimum value to be in the screen when we are done remapping and then another out max here so i'm going to set that to 20 20 and this to screen width minus 20 and screen height minus 20 to kind of leave a little border and width and height uh, screen width and screen height uh, I got this wrong so this is height and this is width so that would allow us um, to get the out values here and now we are going to go ahead and multiply this by the range of our out value which means just subtract max and min from max that will give us a range and then divide it by the range of our map so we are going to take map.max.x minus map.min.x and then we are going to add to this our out max is minimum value to kind of push it forward so that it is has equal spacing on both sides and for the y we are going to basically do the same thing except that all the x now become y which is uh, pretty obvious i guess and and we are actually going to subtract the out min value and we are going to subtract this whole thing from our height because well the y coordinate is inverted in our screen the way we have set it up so now we, when we are drawing everything we can just use remapped vertices for drawing that and what you should see is that now we do get a lot of vertices and if you look closely enough you can make out the shape of the first map of doom i'm going to reduce the size a bit and yeah that means our vertices are working Anyways guys, I'm gonna end the video here and I'll see you in the next one in which we are gonna actually get to some of the uh, fun parts by getting some line depth and side depth reading and then we are gonna like display some uh, stuff onto the screen like actually connecting the vertices that we draw uh, today. So in, I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one and uh, make sure to share this video with other people as well and bye.